My name is Mitchell Sigmund and I'm a product specialist at Acoustica. I'd like to welcome you to the Mixcraft 7 Quick Start Video Guide. This brief video contains everything you need to get up and running with Mixcraft, including recording audio and MIDI, using loops, and adding effects. Have fun and be sure to check out our extensive collection of Mixcraft University instructional videos at Acoustica.com. From everyone at Acoustica, thanks for choosing Mixcraft. When Mixcraft is launched for the first time, the first thing you'll see is the new project settings window. We don't need to go over what all these settings are right now, but to begin with, we'll just start with a couple of audio tracks. So I'll set this to two audio tracks, and oh, we'll set up two instrument tracks while we're at it. After that, you can press the OK button, and you'll see the Mixcraft automatically creates two instrument tracks here, and two audio tracks. To make sure that Mixcraft plays and records audio properly, you'll want to make sure that audio latency is properly set. Ideally, you'll want to use the lowest latency setting possible. Your computer's processor speed, amount of RAM, and the type of audio hardware used all affect audio recording and playback performance. If the latency setting is lower than your hardware can handle, you may hear breaks or gapping sounds in the audio. Higher settings make for more reliable audio output, but can cause audible echoes when using software monitoring during recording and lag when playing virtual instruments. First, we'll start by selecting the type of audio driver. Start by selecting File and Preferences and then make sure Sound Device is clicked up here. WaveRT is the default setting in newer Windows machines. Slower computers may require a higher latency setting when using WaveRT. If you're using Windows 7 or 8, you may be able to select WaveRT Exclusive Mode, which is this right here. If your computer is up to the task, this mode allows latency settings down to 3 milliseconds, which is super fast, but as you can see in this window that pops up, Exclusive Mode disables audio and other programs when Mixcraft is running. If you aren't able to use WaveRT, ASIO is the next best option. That's this guy right here. If it's grayed out, you'll need to download and install current ASIO drivers from your audio hardware's manufacturer website. Some ASIO drivers let you adjust device settings by clicking the Open Mixer button right here. And you can see this is adjusting my Lexicon Lambda, and right here is the latency setting. Other ASIO hardware sometimes uses an external helper application for device settings. Be sure to consult your audio hardware's documentation for full information. Regardless of which driver you're using, you'll want to make sure that the default recording and playback devices are set correctly. This is especially important if you've got more than one audio device hooked up to your computer, so make sure that you're getting audio input and output or you're actually plugging things in. When you're done configuring your sound device, click the OK button. If you're unable to achieve satisfactory recording and playback quality, you may need to invest in an audio system designed for professional music applications. Another effective solution could be defragging a hard drive or even replacing the drive if it's got a lot of hours on it. Finally, keep an eye on Mixcraft's CPU meter down here. This shows Mixcraft's usage of computer processing power as well as the computer's own operating system. Here we'll put together a song using loops from Mixcraft's included library. Start by clicking the library tab at the bottom of the screen, then click the sort by pop-up over here and select Song Kit. We'll choose the 12-8 Blues Song Kit. Mixcraft Song Kits include a bunch of loops of complementary instruments that you can put together to make a song, including the drum parts, bass parts, guitar parts, and so forth. You can listen to loops before you drag them into your song up here by pressing the little green player over here. Now we're going to take this loop and drag it into the song. Right now I'm holding down the mouse button and we call this hovering. You see these two little triangles right here? These indicate where the loop's gonna fall in our song. So I wanna go back to bar one, so it starts exactly at the beginning, and now I'm gonna release the mouse. By the way, a clip is what we call these rectangular blocks of audio or MIDI in the track view window. When you drop the first loop into any new project, this dialog here opens. Because most loops have a native tempo and key signature, clicking yes in this dialog will automatically adjust a new project's tempo and key to match the first loop. So let me move this box a little bit. And right here we can see the project's tempo is 120 beats per minute in 4-4 time in the key of C. However, this bass loop right here is 86 beats per minute in the key of E in 4-4 time. So if I press yes, watch right here. You can see my tempo and my key signature changed, but the 4-4 time signature remains. Any additional loops dragged into the project will now play at the same tempo and key signature so everything works together correctly. To play back our bass loop in the song, we can press the play button right here. And you can stop it by pressing it again. You can also start and stop playback with the spacebar. 
If the clip starts playing somewhere in the middle, like this, it's because the carrot that we talked about is in the wrong place. You can relocate the carrot by clicking the timeline up here. So I'm going to move that carrot to the first beat by clicking near one over here. You can see our little two tiny triangles. And when I press play, it starts on the first beat. Now we can add more loops to flesh out our song. Going down to the loop library here, let's listen to a drum pattern. And you don't even need to stop it, you can drag it right in. And I'm going to put it on bar one. And here's the guitar part. And let's have a listen to it. That guitar is a little bit loud, so I'm going to grab the volume slider, move that guy down, maybe move the drums down a little bit too. Now you might have noticed that the drum part is actually shorter than the bass and guitar parts, so let's clean up some things here. I'm going to zoom out a bit, and the easiest way to do that is by using the magnifying glasses right here that let you zoom in and zoom out. So I'm going to click this guy so I can see a little more what's going on. So now you can see the different lengths of the loops. And the easiest way we can square all this up would be to make copies of this drum loop here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag and drag this until it clears so it's not on top of itself. And then I'm going to drag again. We can also make big clips smaller like this guitar clip right here. I'm going to put the mouse right over the end and see it turns into arrows that point right and left. And I'm just going to slide this over here. And you might notice that all these are snapping to the grid, and that's because of the setting up here. This is the snap setting, and we've got this set to grid, which means that moving and cutting clips will automatically happen on the grid lines, depending on your zoom setting. So snap to grid usually works for most applications, but if you click the menu, you can see you've got a lot of different types of settings here, uh, including off, which lets you freely move things around however you want. But you've got to be really careful because things can get off time this way. And also, I'd like to have the drum beat all the way at the top, so I'm going to grab this, I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to hold down and drag, and drag it up here. So now we've got drums, bass, and guitar. When you're done choosing loops to put in your song, you can close the library window by clicking on this little dash right here. Oftentimes when you're working on a project, you'll find you want to loop one small section of a song, and Mixcraft makes it real easy to do this. To loop a section, click and drag up here in the timeline the section you'd like to loop. And again, make sure snap to grid is on or snap to some sort of musical value because if you have it turned off, it'll land in weird places and your loop won't work out very well because it'll jump. So let's put this in grid. And I'm going to drag the first two bars. And then I'm going to press the loop button right here. Now when I press play, it loops. And if you click anywhere in the workspace, the purple highlight will disappear, but the loop is still turned on, so it still works. And you'll see the area that isn't looped is grayed out a little bit. To turn looping off, you can just click on the loop button again. To record your own audio using a microphone or instrument plugged into your audio hardware, begin by single clicking on a blank audio track in the main window. Unused audio tracks will be named audio track by default and have this little speaker icon right here. If there are no unused audio tracks on the screen, you can create one by clicking the plus track button and selecting insert audio track. Now we're going to choose the audio input source for this track by clicking on the down arrow right here. The audio hardware that I'm using has eight separate audio input jacks which are organized into four groups of left and right, which you can see right here. One and two left and right, three and four left and right, and so forth. And each one has a stereo input option as well. Since I'll be plugging a single microphone into the first audio input jack, I'm going to choose left channel input 1. Mixcraft usually defaults to stereo input using the audio input's first two inputs, so if you're recording a mono input single like a single microphone or electric guitar, be sure to choose a single input, otherwise you'll end up creating a stereo file with the exact same recording in both channels, and this would just waste hard drive space. Selecting an input source for the track automatically turns on the record arming for a track, and arm means that the track is ready to record on. You can turn arm on and off also by clicking on the arm button. Now that my track is armed, you can see that the meters move when I talk into the microphone. If you're using an ASIO sound device like I am, the volume slider disappears when the track is armed. You can see that it's not there anymore, and if I turn off arming, it comes back. To set audio input level when using an ASIO sound device, you'll use the input gain or level knob on the actual device itself. If you're using a core audio or wave sound device, the channel volume slider turns red and acts as an input level adjustment. I've switched the audio preference to core audio, and now when I press the arm button, 
you can see we still have a slider, but it's red. And if I move this, you can see that the input level changes. I'll switch back to ASIO mode so our red slider is going to disappear when the track is armed. To simplify recording in time with the project tempo, you'll want to turn on Mixcraft's built-in metronome. You can set it to click during playback, recording, or both. To turn on the metronome, click the metronome icon right here. And here we have options for clicking during playback or recording. For now, we'll leave the playback box unchecked so it won't click during regular playback, but we'll check the recording box so it clicks during recording. You'll probably want the recording count and measures box checked as well. This means that when you press the record button, Mixcraft gives a countdown before it begins recording. You can select the length of the countdown in bars with these up and down arrows right here. And since our project is in 4-4 time, with this set to one bar, this means Mixcraft clicks four times before recording begins. I'm going to leave it set to one bar for now. I'm going to click up here in the timeline to make sure that our carrot is at bar 1. And this means the recording will start at bar 1. And then I'll begin recording by clicking the record button over here. Mixcraft will then give me four counts and we're in. I said, hey baby, it's nice to meet ya. Can I buy you a pizza? And when I'm done recording, I can click the red record button to stop recording. And now we've recorded our first audio track. To listen back to it, I can press the play button down here. I said, hey baby. And I can turn off record arming for the track by clicking the arm button. This will make our volume slider return and I can use it to adjust the volume of my vocal I just recorded. I said, hey baby. It's nice to meet ya. Can I buy you a pizza? Unlike an audio track which contains digitized sound data, a MIDI clip contains MIDI notes. You can think of MIDI as a sort of computerized player piano because a MIDI clip doesn't actually make any sound, it just contains instructions that tell a MIDI instrument to play certain notes at a certain time, much like a player piano. There are a number of ways to create MIDI clips, but the most common way is to plug a USB MIDI controller keyboard into the computer to play MIDI instruments and record performances. If you don't own a USB MIDI controller, you can play notes directly from your computer's keyboard using Mixcraft's Musical Typing Keyboard. To turn on the Musical Typing Keyboard, we'll go to View and select Musical Typing. See these letters right here? These correspond to the keys on your computer's keyboard, which let you play melodies directly from the keyboard. These other controls let you specify other things like octave range, no transposition, velocity, sustain, and more. You can close the Musical Typing Keyboard by clicking the X up here, which turns red when you mouse over it. To create a virtual instrument, first you'll need to make sure you have a virtual instrument track opened in the main window. So we're going to click the plus track button over here and select insert virtual instrument track. And here's our virtual instrument track. And I'm going to grab this and move it below the vocal track. You can always tell a virtual instrument track because of the little keyboard icon right here. Make sure that it's highlighted by clicking on it. And if you have a USB controller plugged in or the musical typing keyboard is open, you'll be able to play a piano sound. If you'd like to choose different sounds, click on the keyboard icon right here. And this opens the instrument preset window. And you can see a big list of sounds right here, which you can scroll by moving the scroll bar right here. And there's a huge amount of sounds. Let's try a flange saw stack. Once you've found a sound that you're happy with, you can close the instrument preset window by clicking on the X up here. From here on out, recording a performance is mostly the same as recording an audio clip. You'll set the metronome preferences by clicking the metronome. Place the carrot where you'd like the recording to begin by clicking up here in the timeline, which I'm going to put on 1. So there's my carrot right there. And when you're ready to begin recording, press the red record button, wait for the metronome countdown, and kick out the jams. I said, hey baby. It's nice to meet ya. Can I buy you a pizza? When you're done, you can click the red record button again. And just like an audio recording, you can listen back by clicking on the play button. I said, hey baby. It's nice to meet ya. Can I buy you a pizza? Mixcraft includes a large suite of real-time audio effects that can be applied to audio clips or virtual instruments. These are often referred to as plug-in effects or just plugins. 
To add a plugin effect, click on a track's effects button, which is right here. I want to add some reverb to my vocal track, so I'm going to click on effects right here. And this opens up the effects list window. I can choose an effect by clicking select an effect, or the down arrow right here. And I'm going to use acoustic reverb. And to the right is a column that says preset, and I can click on the button right here. And you can see there's a list of presets here. So let's go with a medium room. And if I press play, I can immediately hear the reverb effect on my vocal. I said, hey baby, it's nice to meet ya. Can I buy you a pizza? I can also select different presets by clicking again over here. Let's say I want a bigger reverb. Let's go to very large. I said, hey baby, it's nice to meet ya. And once you're happy with the effect setting, you can click on the red X up here to close the window, and you're ready to go. Let's say you've completed your song and you'd like to make a mix down file to WAV or MP3 format. That's going to be this icon right here, and you can see it says mix down to audio file. And if I click it, it's going to ask me if I want to save changes I've made, and it's usually a good idea to do that. And now I've got some choices. First, it's going to ask me where I'd like to save the file to, so for now I'm just going to save it to the desktop, but you can navigate to any other folder on your computer if you'd like to save it someplace else. And then it prompts us for a name. So I'm going to call this Awesome Jam Pizza Blues. And here we have a pop-up menu where you can select what type of file. Most likely you're going to select MP3 or WAV, but you've also got some other choices. Uh, you can output a MIDI file here if you want a standard MIDI file, or a self-contained Mixcraft project or a template file for Mixcraft, and some other audio formats, including Windows Media or OGG compression. The Edit Details button here lets us tweak some of the MP3 parameters, but 192 kilobytes per second is fine. That'll sound good. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'll hit Save. And Mixcraft will render the file in the background. Now if I go to the desktop, there's my song. I can double-click on it. And I can open this up in the Windows Media Player. I said, hey, baby, it's nice to meet ya. And before we go, we just want to remind you to save your work frequently, which you can do with this little disk icon here, or in the file menu by hitting save. And have fun in Mixcraft.